nervous, my dear? A bit. Mostly I feel silly in this dress. Isabel, we're here to celebrate, not to climb trees in the orchard. Besides, you look radiant. Elrath himself smiles on the Griffin Empire today. We are gathered here today to witness the marriage of our beloved sovereign, Nikolai, King of our Holy Empire, to our fair lady, Isabel, Jewel of the Greyhound Duchy. under siege. We must retreat to the Summer Palace. No! I can't leave him! Come! This is war, and you are not a warrior. I wish I was, Godric. Perhaps I should be. Hello and welcome to a Let's Play of Heroes of Might and Magic 5. Not a blind let's play, at least not totally. I, I've certainly played through the core game, but uh, I'm not sure if I've played through all the expansion content. I've played some of it, but uh, can't say how much I've actually played. I don't recall too much out of this game, other than the feeling that this was a downgrade compared to Heroes of Might and Magic 3. I'm sort of skipping the fourth one because it's a uh, it's actually a very different game uh, compared to three and five, so it, it 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 doesn't fit into the continuum of the games quite so easily. But I feel this was moving more toward a bl plot-driven adventure than a, a strategy strategy game. I. Uh, I don't recall exactly where I got that feeling from though. Like, maybe from the feeling that you're more railroaded into doing certain things in a certain specific way and uh, that losing a hero or, or, or the army attached to it might be basically game over that, for that mission. But it feels more like a very unforgivable adventure. You just have to meet the challenges and succeed, 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 or you have to try again. But that's a vague recollection. Might as well get to the game. Right. There's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six campaigns, the core game, and each one has five missions, so 30 missions at least and not including the expansions. Mission 1, the Queen. The invasion of the demons is grim news for the Griffin Empire. King Nikolai has been forced to postpone his wedding, rushing to the front lines to lead his knights into battle. Waiting expectantly in the safety of the Summer Palace at Whitecliff, Lady Isabel receives joyless tidings.
fuck was that? You've been acting a bit oddly, Beatrice. Are you feeling well? Me? Oh, well, it's I'm homesick, I suppose. Feeling edgy and bored. It may be boring, ladies, but at least it is far from the war. Not for long. Another messenger arrived this morning. The demons have taken Hardwick and Thornham. Either we go to war, or war comes to us. Any news of Nikolai? He's fine, but, milady, he's young and unsure of himself. He's too embarrassed to ask for help. I know he forbade us to leave. And we shall obey him. Young or not, he is the king. You were ordered here, and I was ordered to protect you. It's quite simple. But the Empire is in peril! <laughs> Shouldn't we do something? Why was Nikolai so opposed to asking the Elves and the Mages for help? Or the Dwarves? The Elves have been slow to recover from the last war. The Mages? Blasphemers led by Cyrus, a man with delusions of godhood. Besides, Nikolai hasn't forgotten that Alaron and Cyrus came back alive from the War of the Eclipse, but his own father did not. Still, if he were here, he might command us differently. Perhaps, if it really is that oh. bad. Two more towns, Godric. How bad must it be? Please, Godric, though you do not like him, take word to Archmage Cyrus. Their magic would be of great help against the demons. There is wisdom in what you say, but that Cyrus and the king's orders... For the Empire, Godric, which is greater than any one king, even one we love so dearly. As you wish, milady. Griffin Eternal! And what about us? Shall we take word to the Elves? You should. You have the wisdom to negotiate with Alaron, and are practiced in the art of diplomacy. As for me, I've always felt more comfortable in a camp than at court. But we could go together. Me? Go to Arilyn? Beatrice, I'm surprised at you. At the Abbey, you were so overprotective. You'll stay here, then? Not at all. I shall raise a militia. That is more suitable to my talents. That's too dangerous. I shall be surrounded by soldiers in the heart of the Griffin Empire. Safer than anywhere else, I think. As my queen commands. Go quickly. You will find me somewhere between here and the battlefield. To war! <laughs> to war. Well, she's not suspicious at all. Also, oh, Jesus fucking Christ, it takes forever to actually get into the game. What, and what was the fight between the knight and the demon at the start of it? Had nothing, at least obviously, obvious nothing to do with the, what's happening here. Just a couple of minutes extending the opening cutscene for some reason. Assemble 100 peace ants, assemble 25 food man, and Isabel must survive. Seems simple enough. A fairly small map. Not much I can do. I think this is more or less like a tutorial type of thing. Uh, picked a little bit of extra cash here. I really feel like going back for it. I 
Again, there's like 30 missions, and while the opening ones might go past fairly quickly, I'm pretty sure the later ones will take multiple hours to complete. Kill of Regents. Map should be movable, right? Well, I'm sort of used to strategic maps uh, staying in a, from a single perspective. It's easier to orientate yourself. I'm not a fan of these because the 3D map just hides detail, relevant details. I, I hate this uh, age of uh, strategic gaming. This isn't. There's nothing bad in and of itself to implementing things in 3D. It just you have to keep in mind that the vital information exit, like here, is now just hidden behind the uh, totally unnecessary uh, visuals of a tree there, and that should never be the case. So it's more of a failure in implementation of the critical information compared to the. I can be. Get off our fields! We don't want you here! What do you mean by this disobedience? They say the war goes badly, milady. We hear that the demons are killing everything and eating the dead. We don't want to go. Cowards! The Griffin Empire shall emerge victorious! Well then, they can do it without us. We're staying here. Now get off our land! You will fulfill your oaths to your lord, even if you must do it in chains. Take them! Our first fight. Mm. Seems like the... Didn't really have time to do anything there. I wonder if there's some sort of an auto combat setting on. Can I cast anything? No. Wonderful. So, I don't think you can kill heroes in this, but the, you can at least use them in other, doing other things than just casting spells. thousand bucks, right? We have the footmen, so a couple of farms and we should be done with the first objectives. There's not that much uh, map left either, so that actually could actually be the entire mission there. Tactics phase. Uh, I tried the, this mission a little bit before I started recording, so they just keep basically some of the initial tutorials because I had already seen them. It's it's really basic stuff like what is gold, uh, how to what the buttons do, things like that. Nothing particularly important. How to skip turns, how to defend, blah blah blah. <laughs> Waiting for him to come a little bit closer. <laughs> Just 
it's not really necessary, but at the same time I don't want to take casualties at all, because the entire purpose of the mission seems to be to gather up the handful of troops, so any kind of major casualty could uh, delay us being able to complete the mission. I don't know how badly that would take us. We better try to keep uh, casualties at zero. Different type. I look at these. They have the ability bash, which is just a thing, probably. Uh, I don't think I can look at the enemy abilities here. I can't. Bash. At every attack, creator has a chance to stun the enemy so they won't be able to retaliate and lose initiative. Uh, mechanical creatures are not. Getting near the 100 point threshold, uh, 100 peasant threshold. Lake of Zombies, gold. I don't see. Unless there's something I'm missing, I don't see the point of gathering gold at all. We have the footmen after all. I'm mainly fighting because I need to level up. Actually, that reminds me. Uh, I haven't really taken a look at the actual hero. I think she has a special ability that gives you something like 250 gold per day. Something along those lines. I absolutely need to get some kind of heavy army to hit the zombies first. They're slow as hell, so that shouldn't be too big of a problem. We need to strike first. We might as well sort of pull back as long as we can. I'm getting free kills after all. Footman will probably have the easiest time. Right, Isabel, Knight level 1, about to get a level up. You have your basic stats, attack, defense, spell, power, knowledge, so all old stuff. Luck, mana, old stuff, morale, old stuff. Uh, you can see your army, you can see your war machines. I think the skills is a misdifferent though compared to other games in the series. Uh, you have your basic skills like normal, but you also have your... Uh, 
specializations and uh, skill abilities, I guess. Right, it's the abilities that are really the more important things in many ways. So, Counter-Strike skill tree has three abilities. So you get some bonuses from the basic uh, Counter-Strike skill, but if you want to get the really good stuff or specializations, you have to choose from a limited set of abilities. The thing is, you can't get it all. And sometimes there are weird combinations that you have no way of knowing until you, unless you basically just look them up from uh, online. So a retaliation strike might combine with a something totally in a total something with an ability from a totally different skill set, and you would never know by just looking at the actual game. You just might at some point notice that that there's a new skill popping up during level up. Uh, I think there's uh, one major change compared to previous games is that spell casting basically is not all that good if you just take the skills like uh, let's say uh, I think it was earth magic something like that in the first game uh, not first game third game and you you would get uh, as long as you basically get it to expert level you get all the the, the spells from that lineup of magic will become very powerful but here, you basically need at least additional abilities before you get effects like a spell affects all target enemy targets instead of one target, or has some kind of extra ability of some sort. And usually, a single magic is divided into three abilities too. So in order, in the earlier games, you might just have to take a couple levels of the skills, but here you have to take the skill plus the, all the abilities. So it takes uh, quite a bit longer to actually be good at a spell casting the lineup. Not getting a single kill. Have to be careful with this. He has a reasonable amount of troops here. We might get some casualties, that's not particularly a problem really. As long as we don't take a massive amount of them. a new level, a new skill, or improve our current abilities. This is... what is this? Leadership. So extra money, always useful, but do you really want your hero to be the money earner? Usually you want the old best abilities. Benediction is weird. It sort of gives good bonuses to a lot of things, but it's... Uh, you use up your turn. So, while it is a minor beneficial buff to your troops, you could do much more with an actual buff spell, or usually just attacking if you have a higher level character. So, it's sort of a... I'm not sure if it's worth it. What do we get from Dark Magic? Master of Curses, Master of Mind, Master of Pain. So basically, you can cast all the spells by just raising this skill dark magic. But 
they're not gonna be all that amazingly good unless you take the abilities too. I, I definitely want to take some spell casting. I don't know if I want to take curses. There's nothing bad about curses necessarily. You have your mass curse, mass low if you take the abilities too. Very useful debuffs. No doubt about that. They want to flee, I'm okay with that. Might not get as much experience if I let them flee, but um, I, I don't particularly care. We get extra troops. I don't particularly, I don't think I need them. Much more interesting in experience. If I got, if I basically got this farm, I'll get the necessary peasants. Capture the garrison. I probably have enough troops to get the job done. Air spell damage increased by 50% during battles. Amount of summoned air elementals increased by 50%. Weak of air. Focus my hero to weaken one of the groups, we should be able to take the other two head on. Treasure chest. Do you take money or experience? Usually you should take money, but in this mission I don't see any point in taking money. So experience please. Logistic Counter-Strike Recruitment. I think, yeah, this increases your low level creature growth. Problem being, you have to actually uh, be an end the turn in the last day of the week in the town for this to apply and I don't think I have the luxury with the main hero to do that. Secondary hero is great for recruitment but not the primary hero. Pathfinding, scouting, navigation. Mobility is always good but do you really want it as your base skill? Counter-Strike, very good. Really no downside to this. Retaliation Strike, Expert Trainer, Benediction. I 
Not sure if those are particularly useful either. Logistics is good for the main hero, I I'd say. He's the he or her is always the one who's at the front lines, uh, doing things to a lot of fighting, have to explore. So it just works if the, it can have a lot of mobility. And it looks like we're coming to the end of the map too. Pretty pathetic of a map. I I'd consider this to be a tutorial more than anything else. I think our biggest opponents are the Putman and the Conscript because they have a potential ability that will stun us. That's a catastrophe if that happens. We'll still win, but there's uh, the but. Rage permanent. We need to get the first. No, no, no. We need to kill stacks. That's more important. We all have more stacks than they have. We have a big, big advantage over them. And just overwhelm them. Still, might be a good idea to get the first strike on the enemy footman with our main attack stack. Alright, fairly easy fight. Minor casualties. Enlightenment. Plus one to one primary stat for every four levels. Also get arcane intuition, scholar and intelligence. This is definitely for a caster, although the increases in primary stats probably useful for everyone. What is retaliation strike? Special combat no. Special combat ability to guard any selected creature in his army until the end of combat by inflicting direct damage to every enemy melee unit that is attacking the guarded creature. Uh, is this useful? I can technically see this being useful in a bait situation where you can basically put a incredibly tanky stack of units in the front, put a retaliation strike on it from the night and just let the enemies basically attack it. It'll take a huge amount of damage from the normal retaliation strikes plus the night's retaliation attacks. So it might be a good way to you know, fight with the tanky army. The thing is, that's not usually how the fights are. Usually you have a lot of 
very varied units, and if you're sort of reduced to the tanks, you fucked up already. Penalty for moving through rough terrain reduced by 50%. Movement speed over land increased by 20%. Uh, there's not a lot of rough terrain here, short title change. My, my basic enlightenment is sort of intriguing to me. You get more experience and you do get more primary stats. And that those are very, very important usually. But it doesn't really allow you to do anything new. And I'm looking at, I think, spell casting abilities. Which I might, I don't think they're all that good for a knight. So mobility or stats, I'll, I'll take the stats. This is a good opportunity to see if this is useful. Should I take it to with future heroes? Should be enough troops, I think. But if I don't lead them myself, they'll desert along the way. I'll be with you soon, Nikolai. Hooray! We're in the tunnel! Yeah, not exactly a great first impression about the game, but I would definitely treat this more or less as like a tutorial mission, so I don't want to say anything based about about the game based on this. Uh, they didn't even have a city. They're, they're not a proper enemy either, so there's no possibility you could screw this up. So that that's a tutorial mission. Mission 2, Rebellion. The path to the front lies through the ruined lands of the Griffin Empire, where rumor and superstition run rampant. The Queen will have to strengthen her forces and persuade dissenters if she hopes to continue her on her path. Right, you can choose a bonus between missions. Um, I have a rule of thumb about these. Always pick troops. Always, always, always pick troops. Because if you pick resources, it'll still take a long time before you can leverage that resource advantage into anything that you can use to achieve things on the strategic map. But with extra troops, you can uh, gain more experience, more troops, extra resources, much faster. So the minor advantage you get from the resources is usually quickly overpaced by just picking troops. Peasants are very easy to get. Footmen. Much harder, much more expensive. I think the cost is basically the same. You either take 900 gold or 900 gold worth of footmen or 900 gold worth of peasants. So what are you gonna use the money for anyway? You're, you're gonna try to get troops so you can go adventuring. So by taking the footmen you're just keeping a few steps. The town of Strongbow is well named. The best archers live there, and I need archers for my army. I mean, yeah, this this sounds more like a tutorial campaign than a tutorial mission, because these are basic units of the Night faction. So, and we're our basically main scenario mission seems to be to gather up the normal units we should have anyway. So I have a low expectation of the difficulty level of this particular campaign. I'm thinking it'll probably ramp up as we move along. My biggest sort of uh, problem, question mark, if is that are these heroes going to move on to other campaigns? They, I think they do in a lot of cases in, the, in these games. So what I'm worried about is that I'm building a character out of curiosity, what I could get, that's not all that good in the 
follow-up situations. For example, I need more combat-related skills. This is logistics is nice, enlightenment is nice, but what we really need is at least one spellcasting ability of some sort, so we can use the mass debuffs or buffs or ma mass damage. Something, something besides just sticking th things with the sword. Uh, also, maybe war machines or something, block, anything. Which reminds me, there was a... What is this called? Adventure spells, right. Uh, destruction, light, dark, summoning... So, I'd say there's four magic-related skills. I don't think adventure spells are there, though. Or maybe it's a combat... Yeah, it's probably just a... Spells you can use in combat, spells you can use in the strategic map, so yeah, I think it's an alternative way to look at your spells, that's it. Special abilities should be something that come from skills and abilities. So like the benediction would be a special ability. Right. Uh, this is not necessarily too important, but we have to keep the overall big picture in mind. This character might be exactly how I design it in future missions, so it has to have some spellcasting ability, otherwise it might not be able to handle all the situations. It's too dependent on the army. Can't buff, can't debuff enemies. Uh, it, it's a waste of a hero, it's basically going to be nothing more than adding stats to our troops, and that's not good enough. We'll see.